One Hour Photo, the story of Seymour Parrish, otherwise known as Cy the Photo Guy. Released in 2002, Robin Williams gives us a different performance to the usual lovable guy that we're all used to seeing him as, where he plays Cy, a lonely middle-aged store photo processor. Yeah, they were once a thing. In which he becomes obsessed with frequent customers, the Yorkin family, where after several years of processing their photos, he gets glimpses into their supposed perfect family image, where he lives out their lives vicariously through processing their photos, and even making copies for himself, which he covers on his wall. Cy dreams of being part of the Yorkins family. However, things take a very violent, disturbing turn when Cy discovers that this family isn't so perfect after all and has secrets, which takes his obsession and stalking behavior into dangerous territories in this chilling and haunting psychological thriller. So it's time to look into this intense movie which shows us the darker side of Robin Williams' acting talents as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about One Hour Photo. So let's get this developed and check it out. Number 10, the inspiration for One Hour Photo. One Hour Photo was both written and directed by American filmmaker Mark Romanek. Throughout his career, he has mainly directed music videos, where he has directed videos for Johnny Cash, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nine Inch Nails, Madonna, Michael Jackson, and more recently, Taylor Swift. One Hour Photo is actually one of three movies that Romanek has directed, the others being a 1985 film called Static and the 2010 film Never Let Me Go. Romanek stated that when it came to the development of One Hour Photo, he took inspiration from other movies about lonely men, particularly ones from the 70s, citing Taxi Driver as a major inspiration. And yes, the connections are definitely there, as both Taxi Driver and One Hour Photo are about characters who live in their lonely realities, who get disillusioned by their isolated lives, which causes them to have psychotic breakdowns. So if anything, it could be argued that One Hour Photo is a character study about a lonely man and his issues of living in a world that has neglected him while spending his life looking at the happiness of others through the photos that he develops all day long, creating fantasy realities in his mind. And the effects of when those realities are fractured. Number 9. The Original Choice for Psy The character of Seymour Parrish, otherwise known as Psy, is without a doubt a complicated character. He has to be both creepy and disturbing, but also sympathetic at the same time, in order to help us understand that he isn't necessarily inherently evil, but more a product of his unfortunate circumstances. Romanek's original choice to play the character was in fact Jack Nicholson, but Nicholson turned it down as he found the role to be too similar to the character Jack Torrance that he played in The Shining. Nothing against Nicholson, but I think it's just as well, as he probably would have been a bit too creepy and less sympathetic. Casting Robin Williams felt like something of a game changer for the actor, as he was mainly known for playing likeable funny roles or heroic goofy man-child characters, ones that usually appeal to children. And Williams brought something unique to the part. He made Psy very childlike and brought a certain vulnerability to the character. In fact, it seems that in 2002, Williams was really breaking away from his funny, nice guy image, as also that year he starred in the equally sinister role in Christopher Nolan's Insomnia. Number 8. Robin Williams was offered a different role. So could it be that Robin Williams was originally considered for a role in One Hour Photo other than the main antagonist protagonist Psy? Well, if IMDB is anything to go by, yes, he was. As according to the movie website, Williams was originally being sought after to play the stern, safe mart manager Bill, Psy's no-nonsense boss who becomes an enemy. However, upon reading the script, Williams was captivated by the Psy character and felt that this was a role that he wanted to play. So Williams asked if he could play Psy Parish, and he was subsequently cast. As for the Bill character, instead the part went to Gary Cole, 
who previously played an unlikable boss also called Bill in the popular comedy movie Office Space. The irony is, as mentioned, Jack Nicholson was originally considered for Psy, and when The Shining was in its early production, Rowan Williams was at one stage considered to play Jack Torrance, so they've done a bit of a switcheroo there. Number 7. Robin Williams' Preparation for the Role In order to have a full grasp of the character, Williams wanted to make sure that he fully understood Psy and the character's world. So much so, Williams actually attended a photo developing training facility. So on screen, Williams looked as if he knew what he was doing. He spent a total of two days learning as much as he could at the Southern California Photo Development Lab, getting trained in the process of photo development. In addition to that, if you look at some photos of Williams, you can see that he was a pretty hairy guy. Well, for the role of Psy, he actually shaved off most of his body hair, particularly his arms and chest. Despite playing a pretty disturbing character, Williams was still an enjoyable, practical joker on set, and lots of laughs to be around. And interestingly, this is actually the second movie where Williams has played a character with the surname of Parrish. As in Jumanji, his character was called Alan Parrish. Look, who knows, maybe Alan Parrish went back into Jumanji and it messed him up so much, he came back and changed his name to Psy and became a psychotic photo developer. Look, it can happen. Have you seen that movie? Going in that game would mess me up too. Number six, a change of music. So as mentioned, director Mark Romanek had mainly built up a career directing music videos and had worked with Nine Inch Nails. So Romanek hired Nine Inch Nails band member Trent Reznor to compose the music for One Hour Photo. Despite this though, upon hearing the score that Reznor had provided, Romanek decided not to go with his score. So instead, the music of One Hour Photo was a combined effort between German-born composer Reinhold Heil and Australian-born musician Johnny Klimek. Both composers had worked with each other before, particularly on Run Lola Run and The Princess and the Warrior. However, it wasn't a complete waste of time for Reznor, as he would take some of the music that he had made for One Hour Photo and use it on the Nine Inch Nails album, Still. Number 5. Robin Williams' Creative Input In One Hour Photo, there is a subplot where Psy discovers that Jake, the little boy of the family that Psy has been obsessing over and stalking, wants to buy a particular action figure. But his parents won't get it for him. So later, Psy meets up with Jake at his soccer practice, where he offers Jake said action figure, of which Psy got him for a present. However, Jake can't accept the gesture, feeling that his parents wouldn't allow it. And possibly because he was kind of creeped out too. Now this wasn't just some random toy used. The action figure was from the Japanese anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion, of which in real life Robin Williams was a huge fan of, and the use of the figure was actually Williams' idea, as the whole subplot about Psy trying to give this particular toy to Jake wasn't in the original script. So this scene was created because Williams was a fanboy of Evangelion. In fact, that figure plays quite an important role in the movie. As the YouTube channel Evermonkey pointed out, Psy would put the toy on his bed rest, which would act as a sort of call to arms for Psy to strike out. So really, when you think about it, the Evangelion franchise plays a huge part in one hour photo, rather than just being a prop. Number 4. Filming Location One hour photo was mainly filmed around Los Angeles, particularly in Canoga Park in the San Fernando Valley. The shopping mall that Psy works in is called Save Mart. Save Mart doesn't really exist. It's this movie's fictionalized version of Walmart. There is actually a supermarket chain in America called Save Mart, where it's presented as two words. That's probably why in one hour photo, they removed the E in the title and made it one word. So it probably wasn't just to be cool and hip. The mall that was used for filming was actually Westfield, Topanga and The Village which is also located in Canoga Park, which has been around since the 60s. The mall was also used to film the 1967 Dick Van Dyke comedy Divorce American Style, as well as Captain America Winter Soldier, for the scene filmed in the Apple Store. So if you're like me and you're not American and want to visit Save Mart, so you can see where they made one hour photo, I'm sorry, Save Mart doesn't exist. You'll have to visit the Westfield Mall at Canoga Park. Number 3. Marketing Campaigns and Robin Williams' Red Face 
The main poster that was used was this one, which shows the Psy character examining some camera film. It's okay, I guess, but it does look a little dull and doesn't really say much about the movie. If you didn't know One Hour Photo, you may not even know that this was a thriller, but rather a movie about some middle-aged man who really likes photography. I prefer this secondary poster that was used, which shows Sai's head emerging from the wall of photos in his house, with his head looking demonic thanks to it having a red glow. It's a nice touch that the camera lens sort of makes his left eye. It's creepy, so that's a really nice touch. This poster was also used on the packaging of many One Hour Photos home media releases, where they colorized Sai's head so it wasn't red anymore, and I always thought that this visually looked better. I quite like this poster as it looks really disturbing, as Sai seems to be in some kind of daze. It gives the impression that Sai is not a very well man. But once again, he's red for some reason. The marketing campaign for some reason really had an interest in making Robin Williams turn red. I guess to demonstrate the inner fire and turmoil within Sai. The South Korean poster is kinda cool and demonstrates the stalker aspect of the movie, although I can't help but feel like it's a callback to The Shining. Then we get this one, which just shows half of Sai's face close up. It shouldn't work, but for me it just somehow does. I can't explain it, but something about this just makes me really uncomfortable. Hmm. Yeah, look, it's like, back up, man. Give me some space here. You're scaring me. Number two, rumored director's cut. One Hour Photo was distributed by Fox Searchlight, which is a division of 20th Century Fox, and a rumor had started up that the company interfered with the creative process of One Hour Photo, and that director Mark Romanek had to make drastic changes to One Hour Photo, which altered his original vision. And furthermore, there are even rumors that there was a director's cut out there somewhere. Yep, One Hour Photo as we've never seen it before. The true way it was meant to be seen. Although this prospect may seem exciting to fans of One Hour Photo, it sadly doesn't seem to be true, as Romanek himself has spoken about the rumors, saying there was no studio interference when it came to the creativity, nor is there a director's cut. Either way, I think the movie is perfect the way that it is. However, once again, going back to IMDb, there was an early cut of One Hour Photo that had small differences to the final cut, which included small additional scenes, an alternative prologue by Williams, and it also had a makeshift score that was made up of parts of Thomas Newman's scores that he composed for American Beauty and Shawshank Redemption, as well as some musical cues from Hans Zimmer's score for The Thin Red Line, and Clint Manuel's Requiem for a Dream. Number one. Gone but not forgotten. One Hour Photo had its premiere at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2002, but it wouldn't get a proper release until August of that year. But its release was very limited, only being released in seven theatres, for some reason. It then got a larger release the following month in September. Financially speaking, it was a moderate success, bringing in $52 million on a $12 million budget. So not bad, but nothing to write home about either. It got praised by critics, many of whom were drawn to this darker side of Robin Williams and for him trying out a different kind of role, to the fun, lovable guy that he's usually seen as. The script was also praised, as were its dark psychological themes. One Hour Photo was even nominated for several awards, and won two, including Best Actor Sassen Award for Robin Williams and Best Breakthrough Filmmaker for Mark Romanek. Sadly, not too long after though, the film kind of disappeared and was somewhat out of the public zeitgeist. It just disappeared. But something that I've noticed is that in recent years, One Hour Photo has had something of a resurgence, where people have gone back to watch it and see it for the true suspenseful masterpiece that it is. So its popularity is growing even now as I speak. Now if only this could happen to fellow psychological thriller Secret Window 2. I think it's a shame that One Hour Photo didn't take off fully when it was released, as Romanek is a brilliant director with a unique artistical vision. And I think it's a shame he didn't go on to make more Hollywood movies. But it's never too late. Maybe a fully flourishing career in filmmaking still awaits him, we can only hope. I think One Hour Photo is a brilliant psychological thriller, and it's a film that we can all learn from. It taps into uncomfortable yet intriguing subject matter, like isolation, loneliness, 
the need for family and to belong. And of course, obsession and stalking to the point where things may start off harmless, but become dangerous. But above all, one hour photo teaches us that often when people may seem happy in photos, creating the illusion of happiness and the perfect life, sometimes underneath all that happiness lies a true hidden turmoil. I'm really happy that these days one hour photo is getting the recognition that it deserves. So if you like disturbing psychological thrillers that dive into the creepy side of human nature, then definitely check out One Hour Photo. You won't be disappointed. Anyway, I'm Minty, and yeah, Robin Williams could be just as creepy as he was lovable, right? Yeah. See ya!